So, guys, what's going on? Lee Priest has uh, found some time uh, to jump on, right? So, uh, in, my, in my busy schedule. <laughs> Listen, when you're retired, you have a lot of shit to do. Um, and Lee's oh, always... No, no, not true. I, I do fuck all. I go to the gym. I walk the dogs. I watch YouTube. I watch... I found this good downloaded movie site. I've been sitting there watching movies. I'm not one of these guys like Jay Cutler or Guy. He's always busy doing shit, like trying to be the manly man, chopping fucking wood somewhere in the forest. But even like, like I see Jay and all these other people, I feel guilty. I'm like, fuck, I could be doing more or making more money. But I've always been the way... Even when I had like the big contracts and lost them and only had a small amount, you know, went going from eighteen thousand a month to four thousand a month when I got in trouble and all the companies dropped me. So I was like, but as long as I got food on the table, a roof over my head, I'm happy. It's like yeah. I can go to the gym because I got friends that you know they like money. Look, don't get me wrong, money's good, but I don't want to have an abundance of it where I'm working, 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 and just miserable, stressed out. Ed Connors would get mad at me because he goes, "Lee, you could be guest posing every weekend." I said, yeah, Ed, I couldn't be making good money, but going to the airports, traveling, then having the guest pose when you're not in shape, people are going to be like, eh, look at him, fucking fat cunt. So That's it's like, yeah. I'd rather just stay home, have less money, but yet be more relaxed and happy rather than just going around and traveling everywhere. It's like, to me, I'm like, fuck that. That's that's not really having a life. Yeah, it might be good in the long run, but like I said, you can have all the money in the world and have all these nice things, but you never get to enjoy it. So. That's, true. That's true. Now, listen, speaking of Guy, do you think – Guy does all these manly things to make up for his for his height and size. <laughs> being being that being that small, you mean being <laughs> being that fluid and then putting the yeah, but you're only two o two, guy. I don't know what it is. Like you always because we have the you, you, you've seen the center party circles, have you? Where yeah. I'm on there with Guy and Jay Cutler and that, and guys always look. I've never known a guy that had more fucking bad luck than Guy. I know. It's like you know when he tells you a story, it's like oh my god, how could that happen again? It's like another car blowout, another accident, almost being attacked by fucking ninjas and werewolves while you're in the fucking forest. It's like always some dramatic story of Guy. And the thing is, I laugh about him because around his neck he's got like the star of fucking David. He's yes, got like is. the fucking crucifix. He's got the rosary beads. I'm sure he's got fucking garlic around his neck. But he has the worst fucking luck, so he might as well just worship fucking Lucifer because <laughs> God does not love Guy. It's fucking simple. He can be guy, doing all the hail marys he wants. He's going to hell. Guy, we love you, bro. We love you. So <laughs> yeah, we love you, guy. But shit, you got bad luck. Don't come near us. Everyone who goes near gets bad luck. <laughs> so, so Lee, man, you're uh, you you're one of the pioneers of fucking the original giant killers. I would say, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you were able to fucking just dominate on a stage when there was no such thing as 202, 212. You were stuck in yeah. the open versus guys weighing 40, mm -hmm. 50, 60 pounds over you. And you were just fucking ripping them left and right, man. And your career started very young, right? Um, yeah, I know you and were, it's 13. Yeah. So I, won my first, I won my first three bodybuilding shows when I was 13 years old. Yeah. And I remember you were you were natural all the way to I think I yeah. see some pictures when you were nine and you were like up till nineteen. Beginning of my nineteen, I was still natural, but then halfway through the year, I did a cycle. That's why I think on my Instagram not long ago, I put up two photos and I said I saw it nineteen. And people say, Were you natural in the first picture? I'm like, I've already just said in this picture I'm hundred and eighty. Oh, no, I was a hundred and because I was still a lightweight, that's at seventy kilos. So I think it's like hundred and forty nine, yeah. hundred and fifty pounds. 19 here now this picture i'm 181 pounds still 19 you can see i've done the gear now and put on this so many pounds of muscle yeah but still people go even the 13 year old pictures 14 were you natural there i'm like i weighed fucking 50 kilos 52 kilos yeah i was shredded but i'm thinking what's that 112 pounds no i'm fucking juiced to the hill you fucking I, morons i think people like, just, they? i think people, people are just so dumb and they also want a justification to why you look a certain yeah. way and they can't. But the thing was, I wasn't even big. It's like you can see guys in the gym who, I mean, if you're super lean and you've got muscle definition, the illusion, even in a photograph, you look so much bigger. Yes. That's what people don't get. I've seen guys who are just super lean and muscular. People go, oh, he's on gear, on drugs, trend. I'm like, they look like that. All you got to do is fucking train and diet and get in shape, you fucking lazy pricks. It's not all about gear, but to them it's like gear. Yeah, it's like ugh, these young kids. Every comment, trend, trend. I'm like, oh, fuck. How about you take a syringe full of fucking air in the vein, you dumb guns? 
So listen, back back on the subject, right? So you were you were definitely making tons and tons of noise on stage, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was something nobody has ever seen before. Even I remember Jay Cutler even said when he saw you, he was like, "What the fuck is that walking around the gym?" <laughs> um, but you know, you definitely went through difficult times, man. And was there things you were going through as your career? You know, you went through mm-hmm. the the federation. You were winning pro shows. You you spoke. You know, you you were a man of many words, but you were honest, right? Which mm-hmm. a lot of times kind of hurt you a little bit with the federation. Um, <laughs> Was there things behind the scenes that, you know, you were battling that people might not have known, right? Because the people a lot of times don't know what we battle behind the scenes as bodybuilders, especially you guys that are professionals. Mm-hmm. Not really. So you probably battle more now i have retired and leading up. But like when I was 19, now I've mentioned in podcasts where the IPB first screwed me when I was natural and they said I would come up positive on a drug test and they wouldn't retest me again. They lost my B sample. Like oh. everything, it's like when I got tested on the Thursday, everyone was told that people were dirty on the Friday. I actually got up to competing, get ready for the finals when Bob Goldman called me over and said, you're disqualified. And being 19, I'm thinking I'm still a lightweight. I went back. I'm thinking, fuck. So pretty much when I got home, I thought I should have been pro and I was living at the back of a gym. I cut my wrist. But, you know, that's about as low as I've ever gone in depression due to <laughs> fucking bodybuilding. But ever since then, I'm like, nah. So, you know, when I was bodybuilding, I wish I had any hard times, you know, because I've always been one that just speaks my mind and I am who I am, where I've never had the, I see so many bodybuilders or people in general, especially in this sport, they want to fit into different crowds. So they act a certain way. So this person likes them or this group likes them or they act a certain way so they can get with this company. I've always just been me. And if you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. So just doing that would get me in trouble with like the organization because I'd speak out saying how the athlete should be treated better. When you have something like the Olympia, you call it the Super Bowl. How can guys out of the top 10 not make any money? So that's like in that video clip in 2003, where you see, see at the press conference and I start talking to Wayne, then I hand him the letter. And from that day on, everyone out of the top 10 got $2,000. So that was a pretty funny at the press conference there because Milos the year before said something and he's like, put him in writing. So if you watch that on YouTube, 2003 press conference with Lee Priest at the Olympia, Wayne's like, and Lee, you even said you're going to stand up and walk out of here if I didn't do this. I said, yeah, I did say that, but here I put it in writing and I pulled it out of my suit and walked up and put it on the podium for him. So <laughs> I remember Kathy at the time I was married to just looks at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, she's thinking, there goes our placings. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you were... um when you were going up through the ranks, how did it were, were like the judges and the fans just surprised to see somebody like you step on stage? Um, because again, for, for people who may not know Lee Priest, and if you don't, you're you're just completely brain dead. Um, but Lee Priest was the original giant killer. Like he was and, giant. And in the nineties, I was like the token white boy. So <laughs> Because everybody, <laughs> every, everybody competing was black, and you were just a, every, like, every lineup. Every lineup when there's a top five or top six, I'm like, pick the odd one out. <laughs> like me in the middle. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to claim reverse racism here. That's why, because I'm white. That's what happened. <laughs> so um, I remember I like, worked it out now. IFBB, International Federation of Black Bodybuilders. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder, no wonder I couldn't fucking win some of those big shows. Jesus. That's definitely what happened. Now, when <laughs> when um when they were when you were going to the federation, you were yeah. winning and things like that. Um, you know how how were the fans? You know the, around oh, you. What about like even so? It wasn't just even fans because the magazines at the time, right? Because mm-hmm. social media, so we were doing yeah. magazines. You know how 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 much did the magazines want to put you out there? Especially after you started speaking mm-hmm. your mind. And how do the fans in general just act like just... Well, not only the fans in general. Like I said, well, I haven't competed in the IFBB since 06. And my last contest was 2013 when I won the universe. So considering I haven't competed with the IFBB since 06, that's coming on, you know, a long time now that I'm still pretty popular. And like I said, I've done Flex Lewis's podcast and I still do podcasts and generally... Mine are always the most viewed, so I guess some people have always had that fan base, I think, from just being myself and being who I am and not being fake when it comes to contracts, lying about products and shit. You know, 
many times my sponsors would get mad because they say the product shit. They're like, we're paying you. I said, I don't care if you're paying me, but I'm not going to tell this guy this is a good product and he's going to waste his money on it because, you know, people work hard for their money. So I'm not yeah. going to say that. Like you have to say it. I'm like, I don't have to say, it. you know, I had contracts with Muscle Tech for three years and in eight months I was out of the contract. And shit. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to. And I'm not going to lie for you, so fuck it. And I think most people knew that when I went to the companies. Like, I had a good relationship with ProLab and TwinLab. I was with them for a long time and Weeder in the beginning and stuff. So I think people knew when they took me on that I was the way I was. So I was like, you know, I'm not going to bullshit people and stuff like that. So people go, oh, but Lee's been with so many companies. You must be hard to work with. I'm like, I've been sponsored. I'm you know, 50 now. I've been sponsored since I was 16 years old by Victory, a Weeder range in Australia. So of course, over the age from 16 to now, I'm going to be with different companies. Who hardly yeah. stays in the one job these days? <laughs> yeah, man, 100%. And nearly all those companies I with, like Twin Lab, the only reason I left them was they got brought out by Natrol, that Tony Robbins, the motivational speaker. His yes. company brought it out. And even Pro Lab, when I was with them, they got brought out also. So it wasn't like I was kicked out or fired and um, Muscle Tech, I left on my own accord because they were shit products and that, but I'm just... You know, people always like, oh, then I was with Black Skull for a while and, you know, just because they made a lot of promises too that they didn't keep. And I'm the type of person, if you promise stuff in the beginning, and I've always said it, yes, you need contract shit in writing. But I'm the type of person, if you looked at me in the eye and shook my hand and said, yeah. we've got a deal, I'm going to trust you. I'll trust that yeah. any day over a contract. But I guess these days you can't now because everyone's out to try and do the sly one on everybody. It's not like the old days when, you could take someone at the word now. It's just like everyone's out the, you know, crabs in the bucket pulling each other down. <laughs> it's, like... <laughs> it's true. It's true. And now the industry, like, and it's crazy because the industry is like always changing, man. Like, like mm -hmm. you mentioned these companies. Like I remember when Muscle Tech was around. It was on every fucking magazine. It was just mm -hmm. fucking tons. I remember the first time I had a Muscle Tech shake. I was shitting my brains out. No, uh, yeah. but do, and do I... you see when you say, it's, you say it's changing? But to me, sometimes. I don't want to be a downer because, look, I love bodybuilding. The guys yeah. now are great. But I'm talking about the whole, like, you know, when you see the WWF where it first started off and then it's just fucking expanded into this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I know bodybuilding's not the same, but when you look at it from where it was in the beginning, say even Arnold's era to now, it really hasn't gone that far, has it, when, you know, you could have some of these guys, we can't compare it to other pro sports because, you know, they've got the TV. But yet when I was getting ready for an Ironman show on ESPN, they had the World Championships. $1 million was first place. I think it was. And it was like rock, paper, scissors. It's sponsored by fucking oh, yeah. Red Bull and that. We've got people making stupid little fucking things to fly off a pier into the water. Sponsored by Red Bull. They're getting thousands of dollars. Yeah. So to me, I don't understand why bodybuilding hasn't got more exposure. Even things like, I've always said, you need the company needs someone working for them where like I said, you got to think outside the box. Like other, some others do. I know Paul Delat has different sponsors, but why are we always just getting supplement companies or things related to bodybuilding? You can't tell me that you can't get one person similar to like a, say, a Jerry Maguire type person to just go get an attitude. Yeah. And over a period of a year, how many fucking companies are in America? Say you had a list of 5,000 companies to go see and try getting the sponsor to Mr. Olympia. You can't mean to tell me that with men's physique and Chris Bumster looking bodies, you couldn't keep pushing. I mean, someone that, like I said, you might go to 5,000 companies and four and a half of them might just slam the door shut in your face. Some you might have to keep going back. But if you are consistent enough and you could keep, you know, showing the big picture, like you've got fucking Chevy, Ford, all these cars yeah. in America, Dodge, American muscle cars. You mean if some sort of advertising, someone couldn't put a good looking guy like Chris Bumstead in a new Corvette and do some sure. sort of marketing and shit. It's like there's so many companies out, even Red Bull, like I said, they sponsor fucking everything. Why don't they sponsor bodybuilding? It's like, you know, I you just know. need that get goer to bring more outside sort of things in. Because you start getting big endorsements from companies like that, people start to take it more serious. It's like, oh my God, Chevy's doing this. And then if you're in a Chevy ad, well, who's this bumstead guy? You know, it sort of works both ways. But there's yeah. so many companies out there, wherever it be like S Force watches. But you can't mean to tell me, like, Tag Howard, they're in other sports, they're in movies, movie stars wear their watches. You can't mean to tell me you couldn't get a guy to go to Tag Howard and just say, look, doesn't have to be like someone like Rami. That could be too much. Get a nice physique type guy yeah. or something, or a, you know, one of, you know, maybe the a bikini girls, girl. Bikini yeah, girls. yeah. There's so many marketing things out there that if they just had a person who could think outside the box, and I mean, be tenacious, go after these companies because, like I said, you're going to get a lot of no's. 
But if you keep banging on the door, you're going to get more different spots rather than just like, you know, Gaspari or Labrada or walking around and getting you, you know, some new clothing company, which are great. But I said, you need to start expanding. Like, like I said, there's so many stupid sports out there that I see on TV. I'm thinking this gets TV coverage and they've got all these mainstream sponsors and bodybuilding can't get that. I'm thinking, yeah, come on. Awesome, Even man. Nike, if you approach Nike for someone like, you know, I'm sure they, they're in the running shoes and all this. Why not? How many people do gym now? They've got to be doing some sort of gym shoe. So you could have a Bumstead type looking guy in Nike shoe for the gym yeah. and some of those girls from bikini figure or whatever. So it's like there's so many different things, you know, different streams. And I said, nearly how many Americans go to the gym and you put a good looking figure girl or even wellness in a nice Nike shoe and that in an ad? That's why fine. not? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I think it could be just laziness, man. It could be laziness on a federation, right? Feeling I, comfortable. I think with Weeder too, it wasn't laziness, but I think where Weeder got to was he was comfortable. He's got all this money coming in. He's got this. As long as the af- athletes only get this much. Yeah. Could you could you imagine, like, say, like, Weeder was given out back then. My contract started at 24000 a year, somewhere up in the 60s or 80s. But let's just say you got a good one of 80000 a year. And then bodybuilding, you're like, wow, I can just eat, sleep, and train. That's yeah. great. But yeah, could you imagine if Weeder gave, say, like Kevin Leverone, an $80,000 contract, and then Nike walked in and said to Sean Ray, how hey, we'll give you a million dollars. Sean Ray would be like, hey, Weeder, I don't fucking need you anymore. So I was like, that's true. Yeah. At, at some point, I think they tried to keep them away because if big money comes in like that, the weirdo doesn't have control over the athletes. He's like, at, at the moment, if I'm the only one sponsoring you and where else you're going to go, so they'll just give you a little chicken crumbs. So it's like, but if, if those big outsiders come in and could you imagine if you were like, what do you get from weirdo? 80,000. Oh, shit, I just had Nike give me 100 million for the next five years. You'd be like, what? <laughs> Everybody would fucking go running. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so. a good point. I didn't think about it that way. I didn't think about it that way. And now, then, like I said, those companies would come in, so your prize money would go up because. If you're on a hundred million dollar contract, well, I can't wait to compete for three hundred thousand at the Mister Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I say, bring the money and cash to me on stage, and if I win, just start going to the audience. You can fucking go, go enjoy yourself. Seriously, I don't need it. <laughs> you know what? I think I think the prize money could get a lot better if, if. Well, to me, at this day and age, and how far we've come now, whether they just go to four hundred thousand, was it this year or yeah, or last year? I mean. Uh, th- it should be yeah. it should be on a million now. Yeah, it should be at a million dollars by this day and age. From and and then if not of anything, not just the Olympia. Like even like let's think about the all the IFBB pro shows that are happening all yeah. year. There's only like a handful that actually give decent money. All the other ones are nothing. Oh, yeah. And nothing. No, they're like some of them are just like ten, fifteen thousand. Yeah, you take tax out. That, and like you said, you you. I remember I got like. When I went to San Francisco, I think it was 10 and Cormier was second. I think he only got like three or four. So, you know, three or four thousand, you know, let's not even talk about gear. If you're a big gear user, a small yep. gear user, three or four thousand would barely cover 16 weeks of fucking steak and chicken breath and all the other shit. <laughs> so, you actually, yeah. it's a sad thing. You're a pro bodybuilder and some of these guys too pay their own way and they pay their accommodation and stuff like that. So, at the end of the year, you can be like, fuck, I'm 60 grand in the hole. I haven't made money, but I got my fucking pro card. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I think it would the competitive side would become extremely uh, stacked on the shows if there was some way. I mean, yeah. I, I guess it really comes down to the sponsors, man. It's just finding mm-hmm. a way where the sponsors can give a m- m- little bit more to the sport or whatever they're giving, yeah. the promoters give back to actually more to the competitors. Mm-hmm. Like I said, anything you, go, anything you go more mainstream too, but I think too now, because back then when we were competing, there was really no YouTube type stuff or social media type stuff or influencers. It was just like you had to get in fucking good shape to get a good contract and then hopefully get a magazine contract or, you know, you had to come in looking really good every contest to just, you know, getting the covers on the magazines and articles in magazines was worth gold back in those days. Whereas now people are like, I don't even have to compete. I can just put some content on my YouTube right. or put up a few photos on Instagram and stuff. And they, some of them are making more money than people who are busting their ass competing. Yeah. So it's like, that's true. it's crazy. That's true. It definitely has changed. But I, I think at the same time, the bodybuilders can use it towards their advantage too. Nowadays, it's just a matter mm-hmm. of them, you know, going out of their cave 
of just a gym in their fucking kitchen <laughs> and presenting. Well, they can't do anything else. If they do anything else, they're going to burn muscle. Right. That's what, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to go to the grocery store, honey. I could burn muscle walking up and down the aisle. What? Go to the movies and leave the house. I yes. could burn muscle walking to the car. I had no. a rough. I had, I had a rough day doing cardio and training today, so yeah. I got to rest it up. A I'm little just going to sit on the couch here and just bring me food for the next eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the air conditioner on. <laughs> That's so true. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, so I was going to ask you now um, to kind of ch- spin off to another topic. So with I like open bodybuilding, right? That's what I like talking about, mm-hmm. right? That's the core of. You know, bodybuilding. There's other classes. Hey, I, I got I got in trouble for saying get rid of the two twelve just a week. Ago. I heard it. You you, oh, you you started a whole bunch of fucking drama. But the thing is, to me, it's like a lot of the two twelve guys now are doing well in the open. Yeah. And I've always said, if you're a good shorter guy, okay, in the beginning when you first go in the open, happened to me. I got what ninth in my first pro show. Did I say, oh fuck it, I'm not going back? They're bigger than me. I just kept training hard, and if you're good, you're going to get there. And then there are people saying, well, what about the two twelve? Guys who aren't good enough to get there. Shit out of luck. What about all the open guys who aren't good enough to get there? In the open, there are tons of fucking guys who are never going to get there. Do we make a class for them? It's like, oh, you want to come to the Olympics? Qualifications are today. You got to run 10 seconds or less. It'll be, it'll it'll be, it'll be, they'll make a novice Olympia class. You you ran, you ran 12 seconds. That's okay. We'll make a class for you now. So it's like, there's a lot of open guys who aren't going to make it. What do they do? They don't give up competing or training. They keep trying. And the same would be if you got rid of the two 12s and they came into the open, they're going to keep competing and training. And the ones that don't, don't. There's probably a lot more guys out there with pro cards now who still never compete or never have competed. So, you know, people got mad at me. I can see their points too. But to me, it's like bodybuilding should be bodybuilding. And if you're good enough, Labrada was, Ben Aziza, Danny Padilla. You know, there's been a lot of shorter guys. If you're good enough, you can get there. Okay, in the beginning, Sean Clarita might have been coming last in the Opens, but he would have kept training because some people say, well, if there was no 212, I wouldn't have done it. I'm like, fuck off. I said, I see you in the gym. I see you training. You wouldn't have quit. You would have found it more of a fucking goal. Because like, to me, it's like, I never had 212, but if I did, let's just say I put on a lot of size and I came in good and say like Flex was the guy next to me or Jose Raymond or that. To me, I'm like, if I'm better than that and I'm staying ahead of him, well, it's not really a challenge. Whereas, you know, I'll do well in the open shows, you know, win some, a lot of times get third, seconds or fourths and fifths, but that'd make me train harder because if I'm competing against Gillette and NASA and Chris Cormier and all these guys who are 50, 60 pounds heavier, I'm not going to fucking be like, well, I'm, I'm the biggest in my class, 212, I can sort of just train hard. But if I'm striving to get after these guys, I just busted my ass. And the true champions and guys that want to be bodybuilders are still going to bust their ass if there's no 212 because they want to prove themselves in the open. You know, because I said, to me, it's like if you've got a 212, yes, you train hard and stuff, but it's like you've only got to be in the 212. You know yeah. what I mean? So you're all in that same sort of group. Whereas if you're 212 and this guy's 260, you're thinking, fuck, I've got to look freakier to be like the 260 guy. You're going to bust your ass a lot, lot fucking harder than, you know? That's true. That is. I, that... I always joke around with Guy. I say, listen, I, I went in the open, mate. I slayed giants. I said, I'm not like you playing with the fucking dwarfs in Snow White all fucking day. Oh, man, he'll tell you it's <laughs> genetic. It's genetic, goddammit, Lee, genetic. <laughs> that was... like I said, Guy would have done good in the open. He puts himself down a bit as not being a great body. But the guy would have done good in the open. And Flex Lewis, yeah, that came in the beginning, he might. But to me, I reckon... Flex, you know, when he was when he was going to go to the Open Olympia, my money was on him to win it. So, yeah. you know, Flex would have easily won Open shows, same as Jose Raymond. And, you know, I think Dave Henry, he went into the 202 when it first started. And he did well. Oh, he did yeah. well Henry, Henry was awesome. English, English was another yeah. one. Kevin English was insane. And so it can be done. So it's like, you know, just to me, it's like just have one Open class. It's more fun. Or if not, I've always said, even get rid of the class weight, then I said, why not do like a Nabadon height class? Let's just have maybe five, six and under and five, seven and over. I mean, five, oh, six and heights. over. That way, you just go by height, five, six, under five, six. But you can weigh whatever you want and then over five, six. And then if you want to have a fucking overall, like back in the day of Arnold and Franco. Yeah, that's but, another you know, They need to do something to, I don't know. That's true. Well, at the end of the day, I think they'll probably figure out what, they'll they'll always go with whatever fucking makes them. Ask, ask the athlete rep, Bob Chicarella. He'll work it out. 
<laughs> oh my god, you're really trying to get me in trouble over here. Oh, Bob, will, Bob, <laughs> got to figure it out. Bob's working all over it right now. He's definitely going to figure Milos. it out. Milos and Bob, Milos, Milos and Bob have a lot of heated debates. <laughs> yeah, over the fucking posing rounds and should it count yeah. and all this imposing yeah. routines and yeah. Uh, oh. But uh, I think at the end of the day, look, man, at the end of the day, it's look. Yes, it would definitely be exciting. Um, but would it make sense for the business aspect and making that yeah, business wise, money wise, it's good. That's why they had Lola what, wellness and this. I'm yeah. I'm waiting for the dad spot class to come. It's got to it's got to be coming. coming soon. The dad spots. So. <laughs> it's coming. Listen, dude. When they first fucking released physique, regular physique class, mm -hmm. I remember we all made fun of it. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, every show has fucking 50 people doing mm -hmm. every single <laughs> class while there's five bodybuilders on stage. So mm -hmm. it's just, it you know, in a business aspect and making a sport bigger, right? Because if more people mm -hmm. enter the sport, if there's opportunity to have more shows, more, more companies being involved, more money being passed around, it's, you know, it's... It's one of those things, man, so it's tough. But I like the fact that we have Sean who says, fuck it, and let me just jump in and shake things up. Yeah. It's a very mm -hmm. interesting. So it's really because. Yeah, it's going to be, like I said, the Arnold Classic is kind of interesting to see how the placings go and who's in shape. And that because, you know, people laugh at, you know, Sean saying he's this weight. I said, listen, if Sean comes in at his very best and any one of those guys, Nick Walker or whoever, if any of them just slip up a bit, it's like Sean can easily beat him. It's like because with Sean, he might be shorter because he's so well proportioned like a little Ronnie Coleman and yeah. the condition he comes in, it doesn't matter who's sometimes standing here. Your eyes just keep going to him yeah. because he just looks like this freak, you know. Even Nick Walker's a freak, but, you know, I bet when Sean's beside him, just because he's so round and those yeah. you know, tiny waist on him, your eyes are going to keep going to him. It's just like that. Yeah. You know, when someone stands there and they've got that wow factor, you can't help but just go, fuck, you know, no matter how, no matter what their body weight is. And Sean does look pretty big, man. I seen, I saw Sean this past weekend um, in Jersey. I like this little uh, mm -hmm. seminar. And he's full, man. He is. And that's the thing. Under those lights, people don't realize. Because as I said, when I beat Chris at the San Francisco, Chris was 260. And people were like, Lee, what did you weigh? I said, what do, I, what do you think I weighed? Every person said, oh, you're 235, 240. I'm like. I weighed 199 pounds. So I always give Chris a hard time. I beat you under 200. He's like, fuck you. <laughs> and I think Dexter was third at that one. Yeah, but everybody thought I was 235 because if you've got that nice round thickness and fullness yeah. and the small waist, and if you're in shape, the illusion under the lights, you look 20 pounds bigger. Yeah. So. Well, listen, if Chris Walker... You go the other way, you come in that little bit smoother on stage, you look the whole You're time. fucked, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Chris probably didn't... didn't... If he lost when he lost, he probably didn't mind too much. He just partied afterwards and <laughs> and banged a couple, yeah, banged a couple girls, and everything was good. <laughs> and he was upset when I beat him in Australia. He's like, "These judges are racist." <laughs> oh, my I said, God. Chris, I said, Chris, I said, these are the same judges that gave you first place three times. Oh, he goes, "Well, it's because you're Australian and you come home." <laughs> I said. I compete in California. I said, then you know how it feels, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's fucking awesome, man. I said, welcome to my world. Fucking awesome. Now, um, this past uh, Olympia, right? So mm -hmm. I wanted to get your perspective on it, right? So we have, let's just look, let's think about the top three, Hadi, Derek, mm -hmm. and Nick. Now, mm -hmm. I'll give my perspective. I don't, like, Hadi was just covered across the board. Like, he yeah. checked every box. It was good. To me, out of those three, for to me, Nick still to me, like mm -hmm. from my point of view, represents mm -hmm. open bodybuilding because mm -hmm. he um, he's done what open body bodybuilding to me is put on mass, proportion yep. mass, and every body mm -hmm. part, and still manage a structure that he's not built with while maintaining a hard, grainy insane mm -hmm. conditioning right yeah um because a lot of people you know and i love derek i think derek derek is one of the fucking greatest yeah. fucking positive human beings alive right and i think derek has the potential to win tons of years uh of the olympia mm -hmm. which is putting some mass on him um 
but what I what I hear a lot from Derek is people just give him all his credit for just his genetic structure, which is mm-hmm. there a hundred percent. But yeah. if we just make that as the main priority, right, that takes away and moves it more into what classic physique is versus mm-hmm. old. And that's my perspective on it. So yes, I was running you like, said it's, you're like treading a fine line, aren't you? Because I love the mass monsters too, but then it's like I love them to still have that sort of somewhat I don't mean like super symmetrical shape, but you know, at least because Nick Walker, he still comes in. Yeah. He's not just square up and down. So Nick's still a shape. You know, I'm talking about like back in my day, it was like Paul Delette. The guy just stood there with shoulders here, his waist come in, his legs went out, he had huge calves. Yeah. You know, his silhouette always just looks so crazy standing there. So, yeah, it's like sometimes now it's over. Like, Nick would probably be the closest right now, I'd say, with that. Or Rami, maybe, at the Olympia the year before, having that mass and the sort of smaller frame. Because you've got the bigger shoulders, your waist can have that illusion, and your quads come out. So, But I think at the past Olympia, I'd say Nick was probably closest to that. out. Like I said, yes, Derek has the beautiful symmetry. But like you said, Nick's symmetry for his mass and what he has, I wouldn't say he's bad, so it's not like, you know, yeah. it's not like you go on Nick's blocky and he's got symmetry. Nick has good symmetry too for all that mass he's carrying. So, yeah, yeah, the, and I said, it's just, you know, because now we sort of went through the stage of it. Then we got, I think for a few years there, it was more to bloated midsections and stuff. So then I think when Roden and all those type of guys were around, it was sort of like, okay, we've got the mass and the small waist again and nicely flowing. Yeah, but it's like that. You'd see sometimes, I'd see, I'd always say it was weird watching a show where let's say someone like Dorian won. Yes. And then Labrador was second. But then you had someone freaky third. I'm like, how do we go from that? Because there's no consistency. If a big freaky guy wins, then it should be the The next next big big freaky freaky guy second. You can't go mass freak, symmetrical, mass freak, symmetrical. It's like it should be mass freak, mass freak until you start getting the symmetry type bodies. You can't go keep mixing and matching because, you know, if this is what you said is number one, then the next guy who's big and mass and hard like him should be number two. If if this is the standard for number one, how can we go? Dorian Yates is the standard. Now, Lee Labrada second. You would have like, you'd have like Dorian first, then you'd have like a NASA, then a Marcus Rule before you got the fucking Lee Labrada. So it's like, yeah, it it, it does get, it does get very, uh, very kind of all over the place man and a a lot of that like you know to me and i always bring this up and i'm bringing up with you is because you know we read all these fucking comments from all these Mm -hmm. people now granted most of them don't even know the experts yeah (laughs) most of them don't even know what they're talking about but it's just it's just frustrating man because like i know for example like you know say for example like nick every show Mm -hmm. nick has to reprove himself like no matter how many times he wins no many mm-hmm. th- how many times consistently he comes in, it's like he has to reprove himself to all the fans while it's almost, it's almost like they want to see him fail for some reason. Yeah. Then if he failed, they'd get behind him and go, Come on, Nick, you can do it. It's like, wait a minute, you just put me down. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's really fucking uh it's really wild, man. Now <clears throat> with the what do you think about the uh how how we how do you see this Arnold coming up right now? Yeah. It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be... A free for all. Nick Nick, Nick's, Nick's like a front runner for sure. Yeah. And then you have um, even Sean Clarita. I'm just going to go on his, how he looks before at the Opens and that. Even though Sergio and Regan probably weren't at their best, he still, like I said, he didn't look out of place there. Yeah. So he'll be in the mix. And then there's Bonnex doing it, isn't he? Bonnex do- yeah. doing it. I, I personally feel like Bonnex is, it's kind of, he's just fallen off. I think people yeah. are... It's it's you know you know you know how the sport is right. Mm-hmm. If you continue to bring the same look or back and oh, yeah. forth, after years gone by, you kind of you mm-hmm. don't have the wow anymore. You're just especially especially when the others had the wow, then it look, makes you look like you've really lost something. But yes. I'd say, I guess it could be. I just like I said he's hit and miss. But the other two, I would say definitely who could win it if they get it right could be Andrew Jack or Sampson. So it's like. It's one of those things. You got Nick, you got Samson, Andrew Jack, Sean Clarita. I'm thinking. Yeah, and I don't, yeah. I don't think, I don't think Rami can bring anything unique. Nah. I think Rami, I think... Rami could surprise us, but then again, I just, I don't know. I think after he's going to have to really come in at the best of his look because 
if he doesn't come in looking his very best, the judges are going to see him looking like he's gone backwards again from the Olympia. Yeah. So he needs to walk out there like when a Hardy walks out there or a Sean Clarita walks out there. you got to walk out with that conditioning where they just go, fucking wow, we haven't seen that before. Because if they've seen something before or a bit less, they think they're going to judge you on that and go, oh, he's missed yeah. it again. So you'll be right. out of the running order together. Yeah, plus the other thing is too, like if these guys, um, you know, once you've been on the top and you started to fall mm -hmm. off, mm, you mm -hmm. lose it. It, it. It's not the same, man. And it's... Know, whereas before too, I think the judges, when you're winning, they start to look for stuff. Even if it's not there, they see it. Oh, look at this on him. Yeah. Once you start losing like Rami, it's almost like now they're looking for faults straight yes. away. Whereas yeah. before they're looking for, okay, look at that. That looks fantastic. Now their mindset's changed. It looks a bit puffy today. They just start looking for the negativity yeah. straight away rather than yeah. the positives. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But I think I think the the biggest battle, I think it's it's gonna be a big strong battle between um between Samson and Nick. I, I really yeah. see I really see that because Sam Samson has continued to improve. Uh, mm -hmm. his shape is beautiful. You can't deny it. Yeah. He's great. Uh he's fucking gigantic. Um mm -hmm. It's just, and then Nick, you know, the minute Nick does poses, it's just yeah, it's muscle. It's just mm -hmm. muscle everywhere. But he got, what he got to, to, like I said, Samson has great mass, and but yeah. he has, like I said, he has a nicer flowing body than Nick. But then you're gonna have Nick, who's gonna, yeah, you know, I haven't seen, really seen Nick come in bad shape, out of condition with his yeah. mass. So they they're gonna have those two examples of yeah, what do the judges want? That sort of freaky. Look, whereas even Samson looks freaky, but you know, there's that different type of yes, look. yes, yeah, so because, yeah, because he's like a pretty freaky, whereas Nick's just a gnarly freaky type thing, so yeah. You know. And Nick and Nick can definitely hit hit that part where it's just like the grainy, mm -hmm. freaky, rock hard, like mm -hmm. well, even like I said, Samson in a suit and Nick in a suit, people might go, I Look at Samson, he looks good, model. They just look at Nick and go, Ugh, What the fuck's that? So <laughs> that's that's the that's the look you want when people used to say to me. You look disgusting when I was young. I'm like, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> you don't want them to say you look cute or you look nice because then you know you just got that nice flowing symmetry. Yeah, it ain't working for if body. They say, if they say, like, that's the thing. So you don't look at Samson and go, yes, he's big in that. But they'll be like, that's nice. They look at Nick and go, oh, that's fucking freaky. That's sick. That's just fucked up. And that's, like I said, they're both freaks, but there's just that both different connotations of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. So the last part I want to ask you is, it is what would be your advice to just the young generation, man, when it comes to just fucking fitness and bodybuilding, man? Grow the fuck up. <laughs> and be and just be patient and consistent. You know, bodybuilding or any type in the fitness industry, to be a good get there, building muscle takes years and years. It doesn't happen overnight. And like I said, don't believe what the idiots online because I get accused of lying all the time. I've been truthful from day one. I can tell someone to do something. I say, look, just do this amount. Oh, no, you've got to take this amount. I'm like, you don't need to. You pros take it. I said, us pros don't take that. I said, I know more amateurs and guys who don't compete who use way more than the pros, and that's the truth. And I'm sure other pros can tell you that. But yet, because these kids go online, oh, what's this cycle? I need 2,000 a test. I'm like, are you fucking nuts? So... And like I said, and the thing is, too, when I did seminars once, I said, all you people who take this high amount, I said, if you don't believe me, go clean for a couple of months and go back on. So when you go back on, only use like 400 a test, you know, 30 milligrams of dianabod, just small amounts. I said, I bet you it will work. I said, and if it doesn't work, well, what have you lost? Nothing. Go back to your high amounts. But these people believe in their minds. You've got to take all these things. And young kids, especially now, thinking about they've got to take gear. I'm like, how, how do you know how far you could have gone without it? Because you don't know what your genetics are like until you start training. You know, you can pick up a weight, some people, and eat. Boom. It looks like they're on gear because they respond so quick just to the training yeah. and eating. Someone could be a bit slower. But you've got to try and get some foundation of work there of like a few years, like five years at least training with no drugs at all just to see how your body responds. And if you're you know, naturally gifted to do it, that's why I tell people, if you're meant to be a bodybuilder, you'll know. It will happen. You'll just go to the gym and start picking up weights. And everyone's like, and it just happens, this yeah. prick, he's only been training six months. And look at him. Looks like he can compete. That was like me. when I, I never got into it to compete. I just got into it to look like he-man. And when I started developing the muscle so quick, people like, you should compete. I'm like, oh, I don't really want to compete, but I'll give it a go. So it's just one of those things. You know, you, you just see people, no matter what they do in any sport, 
if they've got the genetics and gift to do it, they just pick it up like that and respond so easy to it. Everyone else is like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Now you said now you did you did you or did you already have a sword at home so you could be He Man? Did you? <laughs> no, no. Um, I got samurai swords now and that, but back then I had like a He Man costume, but I was always into the Superman costumes and okay. Then my mum made me like a Tarzan outfit because I wanted to be like Tarzan for some reason. But yeah, I just tell young people now, just enjoy it and don't and don't ask too many people. Bodybuilding when you're starting off is just very basic. You want to get big and that, you know, train heavy, but train smart, use good form. If you want to put a bit of weight on, eat more food. If you want to get leaner, just eat cleaner food, train and do a bit of cardio. Like people always look for the secret training program, the secret diet, the secret stack. There is none. Trust me. It's all trial and error. You've got to try different foods, try different training routines and stuff like that. Then you'll finally find what works for you because, you know, people say to me, Lee, what do you do for biceps? I'm like, well, I do barbell curl this and that. And they might do the same thing, but it's like, let's just say I love barbell curl, but you like dumbbell curl. I was like, then don't do barbell. If dumbbell feels better for you, do dumbbell. But I want to get arms like yours. Well, if you don't feel barbell and I do barbell, they're not going to get that way anyway. So you just got to find what works for you. It's like posing routines. I see some people doing a pose. I say, why do you do that pose? Oh, I love when Tom Platt's wobbled his leg and, you know, I said, yeah, but Tom Platt's leg is like, <laughs> like your legs that. like that. Right? <laughs> it's like, so I see some people do like the crucifix pose or the myth pose. Like yep, that. yep, yep, yep. But, but they're skinny. I said, why do you do that pose? I love when you do it. I said, yeah. It's like, there's a lot of poses I like when people do them, but on me, they're going to look shit. So, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. I Sometimes always because uh, you see someone do something, train a certain way or do that, it might not be productive for your body. So just find out what works for you. And like I said, keep it simple because training is so easy. People try and overcomplicate it. They try and overthink it, where it comes to sets, reps, this and everything. I said, eventually you're going to try it all and you'll find what works for you. But, you know, someone does a routine for one week, oh, I'm going to change it up now. I'm like, you haven't even given it time. It's like if something doesn't happen in a week or two, like I think we live in a world now where, you know, friends that send me a message, if I don't reply, within half an hour that I probably have the police out looking for me or something it's like why does everything have to be so instant you know it's, I know. it's, <laughs> true. it's true well listen I tell you know what where I tell the kids the best advice is just identify as a bodybuilder and if people mm -hmm. deny you just fucking call them that they're fucking they're anti bodybuilder exactly. or whatever and that's it just identify well, how okay. dare you how dare you you can't <laughs> see my 24 <laughs> My my ten inch arm identifies as a twenty four inch arm. Oh, fuck, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh man, I right, well listen, man, my friend. The way the way the world's going, they probably they probably will happen soon. Now you get just brought oh, up. God. Some I guy's going to walk out on stage and go and be like, "What are you doing here?" He's like, "I identify as a two hundred eighty pound bodybuilder. Judge me accordingly." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me the prize. And if you don't, I'm going to make a big spectacle about it. Exactly. Your bodybuilder phobic or whatever it is, you're gonna yeah, <laughs> bodybuilder phobia. <laughs> and you didn't, you didn't call me by my pronouns either, so because <laughs> I'm gonna identify as a he and a she at the same time. So fuck it. So I can do the men's and the women's class all in the same. Yes, day. there you go, bro. Win them both. Hey, and if they don't give you the prize. They're, here they're I come. Fucking come back to the fucking Miss Olympia. <laughs> Ronnie Coleman and them can say they won the Mr. Olympia, but can they ever say they won the, the Miss Mrs. Olympia? I know. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, some yeah. of them have dicks anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> I've dated a few. Come on now. What do you mean there? That's true. There is a lot of growth going on down yeah, there for them. Oh. Almost fucking lose an eye going down there. Fucking like that. <laughs> Listen, maybe that's the advice they should give to the females who are trying to identify as males. Listen, talk to a fucking one of female bodybuilder. Yeah, she'll get she'll hook you up. She'll hook you up with the advice. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she'll give you that leather skin, the penis you ever want. Oh know. my god. Well, Lee, listen, my friend. Again, it was a pleasure, man. Um, thank you for jumping thank on, you. brother. And uh we'll talk again soon. And uh, I know it's only four o'clock, so hope have a great rest of your day out yep. there, man. And it must be your late day now after midnight, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going right to bed. <laughs> you had the Super Bowl party, now you're tired. Listen, man, I, I don't drink, so it was uh I, I I'm not a drinker at all. You're the odd one out. Everyone's I'm having the odd time out. Here. I'm the one that's not eating pizza or anything like that. So uh so to me yeah, it's just... great time. <laughs>
<laughs> right? Fucking bodybuilder life. Fuck that shit. Yeah, no. oh, we all want to just stay down. <laughs> you went to be social. Like, oh, no, I'll go. I'll be social. When you get there, I bet you're sitting there going, yeah, I'm, what the fuck am I doing here? What the I'm, fuck? I'm, the, I'm the social one in the corner fucking doing yeah. nothing while everybody's fucking partying. Is it too early to say I want to go home now? I'll hang out another half an hour. I'll try to be nice. I want to go home. <laughs> I've had those thoughts. A hundred percent, man. But no, it was good. It was good, man. You know, to uh, to hang out with people. You know, we joke around, stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. you know, I, we bodybuilders, a lot of us don't really get that opportunity other than a gym. So, uh, so that's it, man. But again, thank you, my friend. Have a great. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk soon. All right. Okay. Thank you. See you, brother.